Imagine this. In a busy clinic in Ghana, doctors start to notice something. A patient comes in with high blood pressure and they also have diabetes. Then it happens again and again. So is that just a coincidence, a random bit of bad luck? Or is there a real measurable connection? Today, we're gonna dive into the amazing tool that helps us answer that exact question, probability. Let's see how it turns a simple hunch into life-saving science. Right, so this is the heart of the puzzle, isn't it? When you see two things happening together over and over, your gut tells you they're linked. But in medicine and in science, a gut feeling just isn't enough. You need cold, hard proof. And that's where probability comes in. It's the toolkit we use to test that link and figure out if we're looking at a genuine connection or just random chance. Okay, so before we can crack this case wide open, we've got to learn the language. Think of it like learning the ABCs before you can read a book. We're going to quickly go over the basic building blocks, the core ideas that everything else is built on. First things first, what even is probability? Honestly, just think of it like a certainty meter. If the meter is at zero, that thing is never, ever going to happen. Impossible. If it's at one, it's a guaranteed 100% sure thing. And pretty much everything else in our lives, you know, from the weather to our health, falls somewhere in between on that zero to one scale. So you might be wondering, what's the thing we're actually measuring the probability of? Well, in statistics, we have a simple word for that, an event. An event is really just any specific outcome that you can watch happen and write down. And listen, this isn't some abstract idea. Back in our Ghanaian clinic, an event is very real. A patient gets a positive test for malaria, that's an event. A new baby is born in the maternity ward, that's an event. A patient makes a full recovery and gets to go home, yep, that's an event too. Each one is a little piece of data we can count and analyze. All right, so we've got our events. Now let's look at how they can relate to each other. And the absolute simplest relationship is when two events just cannot happen at the same time. We call these mutually exclusive events. I mean, the name pretty much says it all, right? They mutually exclude each other. It's a strict either or situation. It's one or the other, period. If one of these things happens, you know for a fact that the other one didn't. The best way to picture this is with two circles that just never touch. There's no overlap. An outcome, let's say a patient's status, can be inside the recovered circle or it can be inside the did not recover circle. But there's no way for it to be in both places at once. It has to be one or the other. And you see these clean, clear-cut outcomes all over public health. A diagnostic test comes back positive or negative. A single pregnancy results in a live birth or a stillbirth. There's no middle ground. These are nice, simple, mutually exclusive events. But, you know, life isn't always that clean, right? What happens when things get a little messier? And that brings us right back to the core of our mystery. We've talked about events that can't happen together. But what about events that can? And when they do, do they actually affect each other? This is where we get to the big question. Are they connected or is it just a coincidence? Let's start with independent events. Think of them like two complete strangers passing on the street. They might be in the same place at the same time, but they have zero influence on each other. Knowing about one tells you absolutely nothing about the other. Here's a perfect example. Let's say a patient in Accra tests positive for malaria. Does that test result have any bearing whatsoever on whether her next baby will be a boy or girl? Absolutely not. The biology of a parasite and the genetics of chromosomes are in completely different universes. They are totally independent. Okay, but now for the other side of the coin, and this is where it gets really crucial for doctors, dependent events. With these, the events are linked. One thing happening directly changes the odds. It changes the probability of the other thing happening. The classic example we all know is smoking and lung disease. Let me ask you, is a person's chance of getting lung disease the same whether they smoke or not? No way, of course not. Event A, being a smoker, dramatically ramps up the probability of event B, getting lung disease. These two things are deeply and dangerously dependent. So let's just put it all side by side. Independent events are strangers. They don't affect each other at all. Dependent events are connected. Knowing about one gives you a major clue about the other. And that simple difference, well, it's the fundamental difference between a random fluke and a critical risk factor. 
Okay, so theory time is over. We've got the concepts down. We know the difference between a connection and a coincidence. So let's go back to that clinic in Ghana and use some real data to finally solve this mystery about diabetes and hypertension. All right, check this out. Here's our data from 100 patients. We can see that 40 have diabetes, 25 have hypertension. But look at that last number. That's the one that makes you go, hmm, 15 patients have both. Now, that overlap seems pretty big, right? But seems doesn't cut it. Let's prove it with math. This is the question. This is the one that cuts through all the noise. We're not just asking what the chance of diabetes is out of all 100 people. No, we're zooming in. We are looking only at that group of 25 patients who we already know have hypertension. And for that specific group, what are their odds of also having diabetes? The special tool for this is called conditional probability. Now, it sounds a little complex, but the idea is actually super simple. It just calculates the probability of something happening on the condition that something else has already happened. The formula is just a fancy way of saying, let's find the people who have both conditions and see what percentage they make up of the hypertension group. Let's just walk through the numbers together. It's easy. Step one, what's the probability of any random patient having hypertension? Well, it's 25 out of 100, which is 0.25. Step two, what's the probability of having both? That's 15 out of 100, so 0.15. Okay, for the final step, we just divide that both number by the hypertension number. And boom, there it is, 60%. This is our proof. Just let that sink in for a second. A random person in this group has a 40% chance of having diabetes. But if we know they have hypertension, that chance skyrockets to 60%. That is not a coincidence. That is a connection. We've proved it. So we've done it. We solved the puzzle. The numbers told a clear story. But what does this really mean? Why does this matter to the actual doctors and patients back in that clinic? What's the real world impact of finding that one number? Look, this is so much more than a math exercise. This is the engine that drives modern public health. Knowing that 60% connection means that a doctor who diagnoses hypertension should immediately screen that patient for diabetes. It's how governments create targeted awareness campaigns. It's how we know if a new medicine or vaccine actually works, or if the good results were just luck. Every single life-saving policy is built on this kind of thinking. So we want to leave you with this new way of looking at the world. Probability isn't just for scientists. It's a powerful lens for all of us. The next time you see a health headline or a new statistic, you'll know the real question hiding behind the numbers. You can ask, are these things really connected? Or could it just be chance? And the best part is, now you've got the tools to start figuring out the answer.